recruiting session now and this is going to be run by Mark Smith. So let's hand over to Mark. Hello uh, and hello everybody. Um, so this is um, one of the important annual parts of the conference which is where we um, reward some of our generous sponsors um, for helping run the conference. It couldn't be run without the sponsors. And as part of their package, um, there's the chance for, I mean, there are many reasons why, why companies sponsor Europython, and sometimes it's to give back to the community. In fact, always it's give, to give back to the community. Um, but there are also um, certain self-interests, like um, getting your product out there, or um, finding new, uh, finding excited Python developers to join your company. And so this is the opportunity um, for uh, the companies that are interested in hiring Python developers from the EuroPython community um, to, to give a short presentation and explain why, um, why they're looking for Python developers and what kind of Python developers are looking for. And it's also an opportunity um, for the audience to uh, ask questions of the companies to try and find out whether um, this is a good fit. Of course, for the remaining part of the conference, each of these um, companies has their own um, their own channel in the Discord. So you can go and talk to them at any point about this um, if you prefer to do it in a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, but first, um, I would like to um, introduce, I think it's Francesca, excuse me, for some reason I've got the wrong screen up. Um, Francesca and Bernat uh, from Bloomberg. Um, if you could just um, share your screen and unmute your microphones, that would be wonderful. We'll share in a second. So Bloomberg is obviously quite a big name sponsor of the conference. Um, I suspect every attendee has heard of them before. Um, you've sponsored the conference before as well, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Do you know how many years you've been sponsoring EuroPython for? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure to be honest. Fair enough. Can you see the... the um, I can't see it on my screen at the moment. Can, can you see now? Yeah, I can now. Yep. So. Okay. Um, Francesca, if you'd like to take it away, um, please tell us uh, what, Python, what type of Python developer you're looking to recruit. Sure. So, um, first of all, thanks everyone for um, attending this session. My name is Fran. I'm one of the internal tech recruiters at Bloomberg. Um, so I'm here with my colleague Bernat to give you a bit of a flavor of who we are, what we do and what we're looking for. Um, I think that, you know, Bernard can definitely tell you a little bit more about his experience and how we use Python at Bloomberg. But from my perspective, um, as a recruiter, I wanted to kick this session off by saying that um, we're looking for Python specialists to join us, um, both in London and New York. We have a variety of opportunities available. Um, so whether you're interested in um, creating applications for clients or like building infrastructures for other developers, uh, chances are there's a team at Bloomberg um, where you can use your Python expertise and have an impact. So if you're interested in finding out more details about the specific roles uh, that are available at the moment, please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, I am monitoring our uh, Discord channel, um, so feel free to, to give me a shout. Um, I'll hand it over to Bernat to give you a bit of a flavor for what it is to, to work at Bloomberg as a software engineer. Okay, hi. Guys, so just to give you a bit of context, so I work at Bloomberg for a bit over four years now. And as Francesca said, we have a lot of jobs, both which are more introductory level or like beginner level and also like more senior level jobs. And we have a different kind of onboarding process for both of those for the more not beginner level we have more like a three month training program where people can join and actually get some time while they learn the actual ropes of what it is to work at Bloomberg, learn our tech stack and all that. And for them, then they actually get to choose their team at the end of the three months. However, if you join as a senior hire, you actually are applying for an actual team with a very precisely formulated position. And when I say very precisely from the position, I mean like the team already probably has some kind of uh, tool system they maintain and they are developing. But in it, actually, I can say that uh, being on the job, uh, Bloomberg is very good at making sure that it's 
you have quite variety and a lot of options, opportunities to work around. And the way we do this is we, besides actually having very challenging problems and interesting problems from all the way of the front end to the back end side, because uh, it's just as important to get the data on our system as it is to then transform it and present it that has actual information to our customers. So we have positions both for like more front end issue where you have a UI and you have to present the data, but also on the back end where it's more like just data ingestion pipelines. And we have a lot of, but like a lot of data, meaning that basically most of the things that we do is very much uh, high volume systems. Uh, well, through some of the data sources can maybe have just a few 10 records, but it's just as normal to have data sources, which can have like millions of records on every hour or every day dumped. And it's important to for us that we get all this data as fast as possible and as not just as fast as possible, but also ensuring it that the data that we get is as clean and as fine as possible or as high quality as possible. And this is because most of our data that we are onboarding is basically financial data and actual traders will make financial decisions based on the data that they represent to them so it's really not a good excuse that for us to present any non-accurate information to them because the clients can really lose a lot of money on it so any kind of such is our very high impact but just to present a bit about uh, myself i actually work on the data ingestion pipeline part of this and I also work on a team which is like start for quality. And actually I have a, one of the positions that are up for is one of my sister team's positions. And so you actually can have the chance now to work with me on a daily basis. And just about me myself, I actually beside working at the company on my team, I have a, also part of the Python Guild and the Python open source community. I maintain both the virtual and the tox projects. And when I say that I maintain projects, I do it both part of my free time, but also part of the company time. The company is flexible enough to allow some time of myself to actually dedicate on working open source projects. And even to some of these projects has nothing to do with the actual team's uh, goals or projects, because for example, Rewriting the virtual and does not really give any business advantage to our team. That is just something that it allowed me to do it on the side, as a side project, on the beside working on the team's main product. And yeah, not sure um, if I have thanks. any time left. But thanks very much, Bernard. I think that's um, that's that's a great introduction. If I I'm going to pass over to Treyport next, um, but just before we finish, um, what's your single favorite thing about working for Bloomberg? I think my single favorite thing is that no day is alike and just the amount of opportunities and or just the amount of uh, people you get to work off. It means that no matter every day can be a challenge but it also can be a challenge while the company not pressuring you. The deadlines are very I think are very sane meaning that it never feels like you're being running behind this pressure so to say that's always a good but, thing to hear. yeah thank you very much bloomberg um i don't have mark's canned applause unfortunately so you just get me kind of clapping once but uh, thank you very much for sponsoring the conference um so if uh christian from treyport would like to share your screen hi hi sure hi. i'm just uh, i can hear edge. you loud and clear which is always a good sign um can you see my screen? Uh, I, yes, I, I can now. Okay, great. Take it away, Christian. Just a short introduction to myself. Um, my name is Christian Berger. I'm the head of development at Treyport in Vienna. Um, and as pictures tell of a thousand words, I would like to start with a video. I think the video has already been shared in some of the breaks. But nonetheless, I would like to get started with it. To, as we are not as well known as Bloomberg, I think it's good to Get the word out. Energy is part of our daily lives, but do you understand where it comes from, how it's transported, bought, sold, and the software that powers this? That's where we come in. Join the team developing the energy solutions of the future. Tradeport, where talented people never stop innovating. 
So, well, yeah, as as has been indicated, energy this is an essential part of our daily lives, and um, we use it every day. We use it right now. Actually, our computers are powered by energy, and um, our technology underpins 80% of all power, gas, coal, emissions trading, and freight energy trading in Europe. So as a company, we have a big impact on the world and not least on the renewables. Um, but I also want to uh, stress that Trayport as a name is probably not so well known in the, in the pipe community. Last year, um, our company Visotech was silver sponsor for the Europython in Basel. And this, and we have been acquired by Trayport. And just to uh, see how much we are still committed to uh, to the Europython and to the community, is that last year we've been silver sponsored. This year we've been gold sponsor. So there's really a strong commitment towards it. Um, yeah, um, let's pass on to the second slide. So as been said, uh, we underpin 80% of the power. Uh, of power, power trading in Europe. We have uh, a global network in over 40 countries. We have three, um, three big sites. We have our main uh, center, so our headquarter in London. We have a, um, a dependence in, in Singapore and our Python hub in Vienna. So Vienna uh, is uh, the center for Python as we have been brought here as Visotech, the former company was a, a pure Python shop. We are a, a Python shop here. And uh, Vienna, as I have to stress, is one of the um, most livable cities in the world and also my hometown. So I'm really happy to work here and that we have been able to build up a, a very good team of developers. We are currently 24 developers from all over the world. Our official language is English, and which is important if you apply from countries where you're not speaking German, obviously or when you cannot speak German. So that's a big plus for us. Uh, the culture at Trayport is very inclusive. So we are really trying our best to help each other to hire smart people because uh, as usual, smart people want to hire, want to work with smart people and, uh, and also get the right culture mix. Um, get, or get the culture mix right, which is also uh, quite difficult, but um, we, are happy to have succeeded in that and we are growing further. And we have uh, several product lines where we are looking for people, we are looking for testers, but we're also looking especially now for AI and data science engineers with a focus on Python. And we are in the, in the midst of creating a new um, modular framework to, um, to train our data models and uh, ensure price indications and price predictions for the market. Thank you very much, Christian. Yeah. Uh, Austria, okay. Vienna specifically is a beautiful city. Um, I think I saw it, it was voted recently uh, the most um, livable city in the world, or certainly in the top three. Um, so yeah. When I was there, I have to admit, I spent a lot of time thinking, thinking how nice it would be to live there. Um, so if I was to ask you the same question um, as I asked Bernat, um, what's your single favorite thing about working for Trayport? Um, what would you say? I would say it's the culture. So it's uh, when I when I joined here, now it's almost three years ago. What touched me the most is that whenever you have a question, you always have people helping you. It the worst thing that could happen is somebody telling you, "Okay, maybe come back later," or uh, refer, referring to your colleague. There's never been in any any point where when we are stuck, that there's nobody that will come in and, and jump in and help help each other. That's quite important. And also the work by life balance. I mean, we are kind of like a startup within within the company. However, we strive to keep the work balance really alive. And and uh, if 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 there is overtime that you get uh, get to spend free time for it, so that's very important for us. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Alex from Optiva. Oh, thank you, Mark. So, um, Alex, if you would like to unmute your microphone and share yep. your screen, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I'll do that uh, straight away. Load this up. So, where are you based? Where are you at the moment, Alex? 
Yeah, so um, I'm in Amsterdam, um, out of my, my house today, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> so a bit of working from home. Um, yeah, it's funny, right? I feel a little bit nervous. I don't always do these presentations, but um, my wife told me to picture everyone naked. Um, however, doing it on Zoom uh, makes that a little bit more difficult because uh, all I can see is myself. So it's not I don't necessarily think you're a good out loud either. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, uh, I'll, I'll quickly rattle through this. We've got a few extra slides here, um, just like Optiville always tries. Great stuff. You Go ahead. For a uh, competitive advantage. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm a recruiter here, um, I'm a tech recruiter um, working for experienced hires. Optiver is a trading firm, so I'm just going to rattle through this and, and try and give people a bit of an understanding of, of who we are, and then they can come onto our Discord afterwards and, and ask us questions. But as I said, we are a trading firm, but we are absolutely driven by technology. Um, our systems play an essential role in how we trade. Our engineering teams work very, very closely with trading to build and run reliable, high-performance trading systems for a complex and continually changing environment. So if you think about a financial exchange might change a bit of infrastructure, um, we need people who see that as an opportunity, not a hindrance. And that's quite a, a kind of different mindset to it sometimes. So again, our challenge is, is balancing complexity with system reliability and performance. So where are we? We're all around the world, to be honest. Um, so we're in Chicago, we're in London, which is a smaller, newer office for us, but is growing. Uh, Shanghai, Sydney, and then Amsterdam, where I am. Um, so we've got 1,000 people globally, and then 450 in Amsterdam. Uh, big point to make is English is also our, our language, uh, otherwise I'd be stuck, <laughs> to be honest. Um, we have over 40 different nationalities in our office in Amsterdam. We will relocate people from around the world. We will provide sponsorship and we will help with what's called the 30% ruling, which is a tax break for highly skilled migrants as, as long as you kind of meet all the criteria. So that's quite a big thing. Now we trade in many, many, many more locations. So 50 different exchanges around the world, uh, including over in Brazil, more in North America, APAC and Europe as well. Um, we are a market maker um, or a liquidity provider. Um, that would use up definitely my five minutes just to explain that, so I can answer that on Discord. But essentially, um, we have to be available to the exchanges much more than most trading firms who might dip in and out as they choose. Uh, so it's a very different type of business in that way. Uh, we also put up our own capital, so we don't do rich people's money or, or clients per se. It's, it's our own capital and our own risk. So um, tech equals trading is, uh, or trading equals tech. Um, there's some really cool facts here. Right, so we talk about FPGAs and our microwaves and our proprietary applications. I think the big thing I would talk about to people is the impact you can have here. So we have a, um, we have a saying that you build it in the morning, it's trading in the afternoon. And that really is true. So where you might be in a product company where it might take three to six months or longer to see the real impact of what you're doing, this could take three to six hours to see the bottom line change and get that feedback from other people in tech or in trading. So that's a, a very different thing again. It sounds pressurized, but you've got a lot of support, so don't worry. Um, and also, look, you don't need to know trading coming into us as an organization either. Um, we have a mentorship scheme, and we also do a thing called trading for non-traders, where you get to learn about how to trade, you get to know the terminology, and you actually go in a sandbox environment for a few days and, and trade and see how you do. So how do we use Python? That's the key thing for, for everybody here. Um, many different ways. It's our second largest programming language after C++. Um, a few things that I would mention. So on the data side, it can be part of our APIs. Um, we also use it to help us pass the data to pass on to our researchers and our traders to help us price. Now we've got here 230 terabytes of data. That's daily that comes through. What I'd also say, is uh, you could be looking at billions of market events a day, uh, multiple, multiple billions. So it's quite, quite a lot of information to kind of work through. Um, we also use it to help us build monitoring tool and tooling is really what we use it more than anything. So whether it's our real time trading activities, whether it's our production environment, which is kind of the power to the machine, um, that's how we kind of use it for that deployment automation as well. Um, Interesting fact that, that Nico Demarchi, who I think you all know, has, has told me before, 
So we don't count uh, uptime in five nines. Uh, we are a fail hard environment and we are on the production side, uh, majority bare metal as well. So it makes it quite unique and, and complex. So in terms of jobs, uh, there's a bunch of them. Um, so data engineering, um, technical operations, which is kind of control and, and coordination. So it works between the hardware, the software, the, the trading team to make things sure things are being done correct. Uh, they're also the ideas hub sometimes. Um, production engineering, which is, as I said, the power. Application engineering, which is almost like SREs for, for the trading floor. And then also you can put on network automation as well. Now we are increasingly using Python there um, also. So happy to kind of talk through these. Um, last thing I'd say is we're looking for engineers, not executors. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who can, when they're told to do something, can execute brilliantly. But we need the people coming with ideas who can spot opportunities or ways to solve problems. So you can really forge your own path. And uh, yeah, that's us. Thank you, Alex. I think the thing I'm most impressed with there is just the amount of monitors in front of each of those workstations. Yeah, so that's probably on the trading floor, um, although you get more than one when you join us, for sure. There are some parts of the trading floor that have nine monitors. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's like Johnny Five from Short Circuit, like reading, reading lots of monitors at once. Um, but yeah, it's what you'll also notice, uh, or you won't really see on this, but actually you'll have uh, tech staff sat amongst the traders as well, particularly on the application engineering side, you sit on the trading floor itself because your interactions are very important. The application engineers hold a lot of control. So if, if there isn't an application there in the morning, we can't trade. And if the application engineer says, you know what, there's something wrong with our systems, then we stop trading. So as a, as a tech person, there's a lot of responsibility. That's great. Thank you very much. Cool. Cheers. Happy applause. <laughs> with a delay perhaps okay so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um finally we have um alexis from numberly if you'd like to unmute and share your screen alexis <laughs> can you see this uh, we need to so there's a lot of noise in the background, Alexis. See it again? Uh, it's gone down, I think, so I think that's better. It's gone down? Okay. okay. Uh, take it away. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I usually come without uh, any kind of slide, but uh, since this year is a bit special, I, I guess uh, it was better to have some, uh, some slide support. So the first thing about us is... Uh, uh, that we are long-term supporters of, uh, of our community uh, that we strongly feel uh, part of. Uh, so if you have ever been to a, a previous Europython, uh, you, I guess you should remember us or you could remember us. Uh, we have stands and also always some, uh, some fun games, etc. So um, if it's your first Europython, well, welcome around. Uh, uh, we sure be... Uh, happy to, 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 to meet you in person if, if uh, the circumstances allow uh, next year. Um, apart from this, we are a digital marketing company. Uh, so that means that we help brands establish a digital relationship with uh, customers and their customers uh, are people like you and me. And for this, we will uh, help them and use uh, any kind of digital uh, channel that is available. So that means that we are also uh, and uh, mainly a data company. So we process uh, just like the, the, the guys before a lot of uh, a lot of data on a daily basis and then take decisions and the right decisions that are applied to marketing um, uh, mechanics uh, to uh, to um, to help brands uh, be more meaningful. Uh, to you and me or any, any all of their clients. Another thing that uh, we share with uh, our predecessor is that um, we have a strong technical independence, uh, which is something that we value very much. Uh, I, I often say that uh, tech is made by people uh, and, uh, and this holds very true uh, in our uh, company. Uh, so we have in-house skills, in-house independence, uh, we are uh, very wary of our uh, production at time, et cetera, et cetera. So has any kind of uh, 
engineers, uh, we uh, are very aware and, um, and, and mindful about the impact that uh, our systems going down could have on the, on the business of our clients. The rest is a quick overview of what is public about us. I mean, uh, speeches, etc., is, uh, is great, and uh, any kind of people that, he, that is coming to a recruiting session will sound like a wow or whatever. Uh, I, I think the facts and the, on our side, the open source facts are, are very important and are the most important and at least things that you can check out yourself. Um, so I invite you to, to take a peek at our GitHub and also see uh, that more than being um, sponsors and, and, and wanting to, 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 to commit for our community, we, we are very uh, into also sharing that and not only internally between developers and favoring uh, their interactions etc it's 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 really something that giving back to the community is very important to us so you can see also and it's fully online as well that over the years of, of europython we have been also uh, been lucky to be selected to give various talks on all the topics that we face and all the approaches that we we have um, made uh, into real production uh, to support our uh, business and then the business of our clients. <clears throat> so this is something that uh, uh, you could also uh, check and might be interested in. This is the way we <coughs> impact to our community as well. Uh, we are obviously work, uh, looking for any kind of uh, software engineering, engineers, um, data engineers, obviously, as well, uh, since we are a data company. So all the pipelines and all the data crunching that we do and every day to find the right value in it for our clients uh, is done by people and that's the people that we are looking for that's all for me and uh, i hope you enjoy very much uh, your python and thank you very much for your ongoing sponsorship as well um i it is noticed when companies come back each year and i have to say you know that there are a couple of companies here that i very much recognized from from previous years, but um, numberly specifically, I know that you were at Europython in Edinburgh two years ago because because of this. <laughs> I have to get my daughter to get it for me because my daughter came up to your booth and I think begged for one of these um, yeah. and, and managed to get one. So that was much appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good one, uh, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I think those were four great presentations, and I could definitely um, find myself applying to any one of those companies. Is um, I, I I happen to love my job right now, so this is a very difficult situation for me. But um, but yeah, I could I could easily see myself applying to any of those companies. So thank you very much for your sponsorship, and thank you very much for your support.